hope your quiz went well. Uh, this is going to be a very short lesson. You could just do try to read through and do the lesson on your own, or you can go ahead and listen to the video. Um, but we're on lesson four, the introduction to probability distributions. So discrete random variables. It says in previous work, we have described events mainly using words. But it's far more convenient where possible to use numbers. A random variable represents, in number form, the possible outcomes that could occur for some random experiment. So if you were tossing a coin, so probably the example that's going to make most sense to you. Um, so it says we would have a discrete random variable x, right? And we would have possible values x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3. So if you think about tossing coins, right? If you toss two coins, we could get as a result our random variable x. It could be a zero if you were saying how many times would you get a result of a head. So we have zero heads and two tails, or we could toss one head and one tail, or we could toss two heads. So therefore our x is either a zero outcome, you have it, the heads were showed up zero times, or one time, or two times. Discrete probability distribution. So for any random variable, there's a corresponding probability distribution, right? So you have the chance that you tossed a head. You have the chance. What is the probability that you would get two heads or zero heads or one head and one tail, right? So that could be then put together as a probability distribution, which is what we're going to do below. It says the probability that the variable x takes value x is written in this form right here. Or you could write p sub x. The probability of p sub x of any given outcome obviously is going to lie between 0 and 1 because you have a 0% chance of something happening and a 100% chance of something happening, so your probabilities are always fractions between 0 and 1, or decimals, or we can refer to them as percents. But here, we're going to keep them in fraction or decimal form. So if there are n possible outcomes, then we have all those probabilities should add up to 1, right? So the probability that you flip zero heads or one head or two heads, those three probabilities should have a sum of one. So remember sigma notation is just the summation sign right here. It means we're taking the sum of the first probability all the way to the nth probability, and if we added those all up, we should get a total of one. A probability distribution of a discrete random variable provides us with all possible values of the variable and the probability of occurrences of each value. We can give it to you in table form, graphical form, function form. So down here, here's an example of a table or and the graphs, right? So it says, for example, when tossing two coins, consider the number of heads that result. The random variable is 0, 1, or 2. So let's just see what happens here, right? If we toss a heads or a tails on our first coin, and then we toss a heads or a tails for our second coin. Well, the probability of getting a head or a tail is one half. So all of these branches, the probabilities stay the same because they're independent events. What we toss on the first coin has nothing to do with what we toss on the second coin. So we multiply out the branches. The probability of getting two heads is equal to one fourth. The probability of tossing a head, then a tail is one fourth. The probability of tossing a tail and head is one-fourth, and the probability of tossing two tails is one-fourth. So remember, what does this represent? This represents the zero tossing zero heads. So tossing zero heads is tossing two tails, which is a one-fourth chance. We just showed that here using our tree diagram. What is the probability of tossing one head? Well, we have one head here, a tail and a head, or we could have a head and a tail, so altogether that's one-fourth plus one-fourth, which is why we have one-half for probability of tossing one head. And then of course, if you're going to, what's the probability of tossing two heads? Well, that would be one-fourth, we can see here from the tree diagram. So the last thing you would check is what should all three of these probabilities add up to, according to this statement right here or right here. Well, remember, those three probabilities should have a sum of 1, right? So 1 fourth plus 1 half plus 1 fourth, that equals 4 fourths, which is 1. Because those are the only possible outcomes when you toss your two coins, right? You can't have any other possible outcome, so your probability has to be spread out and equal to 1 when you have a sum. 
And then, of course, here are two graphical representations of those results. Okay, so here's some example problems. I'll do the first one, and then you should probably pause and try some on your own. So here is the probability distribution. We don't know what happened, what the experiment was, but we know we had a possibility of having zero as an outcome, one as an outcome, and two as an outcome. 30% of the time, or three-tenths of the time, we got zero as a result. Here, 50% of the time, we got two as a result. So therefore, what is the missing K? Well, we know that K is going to equal one minus the sum of those other two probabilities. Because these three probabilities, the probability of that event occurring, or that result happening, right? So therefore, it's one minus 0 0.8, so K equals 0 0.2, right? So this would be a 0 0.2. So I would pause right now and then just finish 2A, 3A, and 3B. Try to answer this on your own, and then you can come back and check and see how you did. Okay, so for letter B, you should have added these Ks together. K plus 2K plus 3K plus K has to equal 1. All those probabilities had added to 1. So therefore, what is K equal? K would equal 1 7. For 3A, it says explain why the following are not valid probability distributions. Well, for A, they're not valid probability distributions because these four probabilities were greater than 1, right? And if these four probabilities are greater than 1, then that's not a valid probability distribution because you can never have that sum be greater than 1. For letter B, hopefully you noticed right away this negative value. Can you ever have a negative probability or negative result? No. So that's not possible. So we had to acknowledge that there's a negative, which is not possible. Therefore, it was not a valid probability distribution. K4, 5, and 6 are just having you either create a probability distribution or yeah, figure out what the probability results are. So example four, it says a magazine store recorded the number of magazines purchased by its customers in one week. 23% purchased one magazine, 38% purchased two magazines, 21% purchased three magazines, and 13% purchased four magazines, and finally, 5% purchased five magazines. So therefore, what is the random variable? So think about that. What are we acknowledging? So we're going to make our table. That's what part B is asking. So your random variable is what you would put up here that's associated with the x. So what values are you going to put up here associated with the x? Well, hopefully, hopefully you're thinking the number of magazines purchased, right? That is your random variable. And what are those results? Well, we have, according to this, we have purchased a one magazine, two magazines, three magazines, four magazines, or five magazines. And then it says make a probability table for the random variable and the graph and graph the probability distribution. So here is my table. So we have one magazine, two, three, four, five. So what is this one? Well, 23% chance. So this is 0 0.23. For two magazines, we have 0 0.38. For three magazines, we have 0 0.21. Four magazines, we have 0 0.13. And five magazines, is 0 0.05. So those numbers, you should just do a quick check. Do, the, do they add up to one? Well, they should, especially when we gave you that information. If not, then it was a mistake on us and not you. And then, of course, you can choose either graph you want to do for your probability distribution. It says to graph. So you can either choose, as you can see on your front of your page, <clears throat> either make a graph that looks like this, so here's your probabilities of the y-axis and then what the results are for down the x-axis. So you can do either one here. So if you make your bar graph, right down here along the x-axis is the number of magazines purchased. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five. And then up the y-axis is your probability of that happening. Right? And so you're going to have, you know, maybe you'll go up by 0.5s or not. Yeah, so it's up to you. So if I went up by 0.05 and then 0.10 and then 
15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, I have to go all the way up to 0.4. So you guys can fill that out however you want, right? So the first one would be going up to 0 0.23. This one would be going up to 0.3a. So you guys can finish that. You can have, ask your teacher to check it when you're done. Okay, and then I would pause and just try five and six on your own as well. You know, number five says shows that P, show that P of X equals X squared plus one over 34 when X is one, two, three, and four is a probability distribution function. So how could you do that? Well, when you plug in all those numbers and get the results, what should happen to all their probabilities? They should have a sum of one. So try that. And then here, so try both of these. Read through them. You're just trying to figure out a probability distribution distribution like we had up here. You can make that chart. So try it and see how you do. Okay, so just check your work here and see if you got these results. So you should have gotten two thirty-fourths for the probability of getting one as an answer or the probability that one occurred, right, would be two thirty-fourths and we have five thirty-fourths and we have ten thirty-fourths for three and seventeen thirty-fourths. And I'm showing that it is a probability distribution. So how do I do that? Well, actually, I want to make sure I show that that has a sum of 1. So those four results from my table, I just made it in table form. You didn't have to do that. But those four results, you do have to show that it equals 1 whole, that all those probabilities add up to 1. And then here, for example, 6, in order to get your probabilities, your probability distribution, you needed to probably set up the experiment, maybe a... Um, tree diagram helped, right? So we have a bag of marbles. There's four red, two blue. So the chance of picking out a red was four six. Chance of picking out a blue for your first one was two six. You do not replace. Therefore, if I chose a red the first time, there's only three, three left out of five. Or if I chose a red the first time, both blues are still in there. So I have two blues, but there's still only five marbles in the bag. Down here, if I chose a blue first, I have a two six chance. Therefore, all four red are still in the bag, so I have four red left, but there's only five marbles in the bag to choose from. Or if I chose a blue first, then I only have one more blue left, but there's still five marbles in the black bag. Sorry. And if I multiply out these branches, right, then here are my results for getting a red red, a red blue, a blue red, or blue blue. There's my probabilities of that happening. So I filled in my chart. So what is my X representing? Well, we told you here, X represents the number of red selected, so I could have had zero red marbles, one red marble, or at most two red marbles, because we only chose two. My probability of getting zero red marbles was two blue, that's two thirtieths. Probability of getting one red marble, well I had to add these two together, so that's sixteen thirtieths, and the probability of rolling, or sorry, picking two red marbles is twelve thirtieths. And then once again, I am showing that it equals to 1, although here it just said to find the probability distribution, so this is your answer right here. So that's it. Get started on your worksheet, and we'll continue with more probability in the next lesson. Later.